Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Kathy. If you are new here, thank you so much for stopping by. If we have painted together before, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. Today we are painting daisies. Uh, one of my favorite things to paint. I'm very excited to show these to you guys. Um, we are going to take a look at the supplies we will need for today and then we will jump right in to painting our daisies. Um, just so you guys know, everything that we use will be linked in the comments below. So you'll be able to look back at the paint type and the color, um, the brushes we used, all that good stuff. So let's get started. Okay, we're painting today with folk art multi-surface paint. Now, um, disclaimer, this is not an endorsed video by any means, not sponsored. I just really believe in sharing with you guys the products that I love. And Folk Art Multi-Service Paint is right at the top of that list. So um, if, you've used, if you've used Crafty Paint before, um, you're going to really enjoy this multi-surface. It's a little bit thicker than a lot of the Crafty Paints that are out there. The beauty of using this type of paint is that you can use it on a variety of surfaces. So whether you're painting canvas or wood or glass or tin, the multi-surface um, will work great for you. So that's a little bit about the paint. We are using Perfect Purple and Wicker White today for our daisies. We have two paint brushes. We have a number 12 flat brush and a number one liner brush. And we'll talk about what the brushes, what we use them for and what the different brushes do as we go along. The brand of these brushes I will um, link below also. It is made by Plaid. They are Folk Art One Stroke brushes. And you can order those on onestroke.com. Again, not a sponsored ad by any means, just sharing the ones that I love. But truly, whatever flat brush and liner brush you have at home, is gonna work great. So use what you have for sure. Um, I'm gonna use the purple and white today on my daisies, but the beauty is you can do daisies in any color that you want. So whatever paint colors you have at home will work just great. Um, as far as choosing your colors, and we'll talk about this in a little bit when you start to see the brush strokes, it works really well when you have a darker color and a lighter color. Um, once we get into something called double loading, which I'm going to show you, you'll see why it's important to have the contrast between the two. Now you could do colors that are a little more similar, but you're not going to get quite the same effect. So I always recommend a little bit darker, a little bit lighter for this technique that we're going to use. All right, let me scooch these out of the way here and I'll show you the rest of the supplies that we have. Um, in addition to the paints and the brushes, I have styrofoam plates. This is my very fancy paint palette. I already have my um, couple blobs of paint on there that we're going to use today. When it's time for you guys to put your paint on your plate or whatever it is you're using, just leave a little space in between your two puddles. Okay, and I'm going to show you why here as soon as we start playing with the paint, but a little space. So your paint blobs are about the size of a quarter little space in between. Okay. Um, also on the table, I have a brush basin here um, that just has water to rinse my brushes when we need to do that. Whatever you have at home, styrofoam cup works great. So just something with a little water. Um, I also have um, a piece of wax paper here on the table and this is what we practice on. So whether you're painting with me at home or if you come to one of my live paint events where we paint together in person, we will always have the wax paper. This is what we practice on. It gives you time to, um, you know, really kind of make mistakes here to work on the stroke technique and loading the brushes. So we practice everything on the wax paper first before going over to a, whatever surface we're painting on, whether it's glass or canvas. Okay, um, I think that's it. Oh, paper towels. I always have paper towels handy because I am messy when I paint. It, it happens. I get paint everywhere, but that's okay. That's the, that's the fun of playing with crafty paint. All right, let's get into building our daisy. So we are going to get our two blobs of paint, remember darker and lighter, and leave a little space in between. We are going to start off by using our flat brush, our number 12 flat. And this is where we're gonna get into the double loading that we talked about. So all double loading means is that you are gonna put two colors of paint on one paintbrush. And the beauty of doing that is it gives you color highlight shading all in one stroke which is just pretty cool, which you'll see here in a little bit. Okay, so to get the paint on the brush, we are gonna hold our brush straight up and down. You are going to dip one corner in your color, the other corner in your lighter color. And for the rest of this video, I'm just gonna say purple and white, but just understand you can do whatever color. Okay, so one corner in the purple, one corner in the white, and then between that space we left between the two puddles, 
we are going to swoosh our brush back and forth, okay? You're going to pull it towards you and then push away. And you wanna keep the purple on the purple and the white on the white, okay? We're gonna do that, gosh, probably three or four times. You guys, we want a lot of paint worked up into this brush. So swooshing back and forth, back and forth. We're working paint up into the brush. Now the cool thing, this is called a blending spot. And what you should see here is you should have purple on one side, white on the other, and then kind of a blend of the two in the middle. Okay, and that's just, it's really fun how you'll see how these petals turn out with these two colors. All right, at least three or four times. We want this brush to be goopy. And I want you to kind of see the brush here. Do you guys see how much paint is on there? It, with one stroke, especially doing these daisies, it's really hard to have too much paint on here. I think that's probably one of the things I see when people first start um, trying this technique of painting is that they don't have quite enough paint on the brush. So it's kind of frustrating when their strokes don't turn out like we would like them to. So definitely err on the side of having a lot of paint on your brush. Okay, I'm gonna scooch that off to the side. Now we will go back to this blending spot over and over again as we're painting. We'll practice a few strokes and then you guys will know when you need to get some more paint on your brush. You'll be able to feel it. Your, your brush just won't glide like it normally does. So as we're going, we'll paint a couple strikes. You'll see me go over here, dip each corner and blend again. Each time you go to pick up paint, you do that same technique. Dip each corner, blend, dip each corner, blend. All right, so let's talk about the shape of the daisy. Let me set this down here for just a sec. So as you can see, this one might be easier to see. Basically our daisy, if you think about it, is a circle, okay? Now, when we're practicing here, we actually start by building almost kind of like a grid, if you think of it that way. We will build a north, a south, an east, and a west first. Then we will fill in the rest of our petals. The reason we do that is that kind of determines um, where the daisy is gonna be placed it also makes your petal shape turn out even all the way around. Because what would happen if you started this daisy and let's say you started at the top and then you started working your way around, a couple things happen. The petal shape and the petal length gets kind of wonky as you're coming around. And odds are when you come around to meet up with your first petal, something's gonna be off. It just kind of looks just kind of funny. So that is why we are gonna build um, our petals. We're going to do our north, south, east, west, and then fill in from there. And I'll show you what I mean. All right, let's put that back up there. Okay, so let's get started. We are going to go to our wax paper, and we are going to have our brush straight up and down, and the purple, or your color, is going to be on the outside, so on the top, okay? And we are going to start, you just want to touch your brush to the wax paper, lean it towards you, Push down just a little bit. We want to get a little bit of poof, a little bit of width on our petal. You're going to slide it to you, and as you're sliding to you, lift up. Okay? It really is just a basic blob. <laughs> All right. And what we just did there was our north. Okay? Remember, we talked about north, south, east, west. That's our north. Now, I'm going to come down below it, and I'm going to push towards the center from below. As we're doing these petals, we want to work from the outside in to the middle of what's gonna be the flower, okay? And it'll all make sense as you see this come together. So again, we are gonna have our brush straight up and down. You want this handle pointing to the ceiling, okay? If you lean one way or the other, your, your, your petals are gonna get kind of wide and kind of out of shape. So handle pointing to the ceiling. I'm gonna come down below because remember we wanna to work to the center. This time the purple is on the outside so it's closest to my body this way, okay? So we are gonna start, I'm gonna to touch to the surface, I'm gonna lean forward, because that's the direction we're sliding. I'm going to push down a little bit, and then I'm going to slide up as we go up to meet that first petal. Okay, now we have our north and our south. And I hope you can see, I will lift this up as we get to the end, it's um, kind of taped down right now, but you should see dark, and light and sort of a combination of the two. This is the coolest thing about the one stroke and double loading is that you get that color highlight shading all in one. I'm gonna come back and pick up a little more paint, swoosh back and forth. Remember we do that each time. And now we wanna do our east and west. Okay, so this time our brush is still, the handle's still to the ceiling, but we're gonna be horizontal because we're gonna come at this from the side. Okay, so I'm gonna start out to the edge this time, my color, my purple, is on this outside. Because remember, the white is always going towards the center. 
So I'm going to be here. I'm going to lean forward towards the center. I'm going to push down. I'm going to slide. As I'm sliding, I lift up when it gets to where the middle will be. Same thing. I'm going to grab some more paint, give it a swoosh. This time we are coming from the west. So my brush is straight up and down. I am on that edge. The purple is on the outside because the white is heading into the center. I'm going to lean towards the center, push down. I'm going to slide. As I'm sliding, I'm going to lift up as I get to the middle. So what we have here is north, south, east, west. So what we can see at this point, obviously it doesn't look like a flower yet, but hang in there. So we have how tall our petals gonna uh, our daisy's gonna be how wide it's gonna be because now we have the skeleton we have the framework in place here so now we need to add some more petals obviously because it doesn't quite look like a flower just yet all right so now what we want to do again we're still going to be building from the outside going in we're going to fill in a petal in between each of the ones we have already done so again, colors on the outside, white is coming in towards the center, and we're just gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna start here, lean towards the center, slide, pull it, lift up as we get to the middle. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna lean forward to the center, push down, slide, lift up. Let me grab a little bit more paint, and you guys will feel, you don't have to grab paint every time. You'll feel when your brush is needing some more paint. Okay, remember color still on the outside. White is heading to the middle. I'm going to touch on the edge, lean forward to the center, slide, lift up. Don't worry about how the center's looking here. If it's starting to look a little goopy, it's okay. We're going to cover it up. It happens. It's not a big deal. And we're going to put a center of the flower there anyway. All right, one last one here for this section. Again, purple's on the outside or your color's on the outside. White is heading in. I'm going to touch to the surface, lean toward the center of the daisy, slide, lift up as we get to that middle. Okay. Now, this is a decent flower. We've got eight petals. It's okay. We've got lots of color highlight shading. I hope you guys can see that. I'll, again, I'll lift it up at the end, but I hope you can see just the different stripes and the, the shading. It's pretty cool. Okay. So like I said, this is an okay shape. But I like my daisies, like you can see here, I like them really full. So we're going to come back and add a petal in between those petals now. Okay, and it's just the same technique we've been doing. Now the key to getting them hopefully roughly the same size is just kind of, oops, I got a lot of paint, kind of watch where the outside of your brush starts. You want to kind of keep it the same height. Like you wouldn't want to start your petal out here if that makes sense, or way down here, because then this petal would be way longer than the ones you have. So you want to try to line it up about the same. All right, lean towards the center, slide, lift up, and we're just going to go through and fill all of these in. Now, one thing I don't want you guys to worry about is if all your petals aren't the same width, okay, or if one's goopier than the other. That's that's okay. This is this is painting. Things in nature aren't perfect. It's okay if all your petals aren't exactly the same as you're going. That's okay. We can't, we can't worry and stress about things like that. Once all your petals are on here and you have the center in, it's going to be beautiful. So it doesn't matter if every petal is perfect, I promise. Okay, we're going to start out here. Remember, lean towards the center, slide, lift up. And same thing here. Touch down, lean towards the center, slide, and lift up. Okay. Now let's talk just a little bit before we put the center on this flower um, as far as the pressure of your brush goes. Okay, this is, remember when we started this stroke, I had you push down a little bit just to get a little bit of roundness. So as you're painting, if your daisies are looking more like this, just a straight line, we're not pushing hard enough. So you definitely want to come push down before you slide and you see how then that rounds that out. So you just don't have a straight line. Now, by the same token, you can push too hard, okay? So if you're here, this is about, you know, the width you want, depending on the size surface you have. If you were to come here and lean forward and really squish down, you can see how much wider that petal gets. So really, it depends on the surface you're painting on, but just understand the harder you push, the wider your petal's gonna, gonna be. So while you don't want just kind of a straight line, you know, maybe you don't need it to be two inches wide either, so... 
that is that. Okay, so that is our daisy. Let's talk about um, putting in the center. And you can do this many different ways. You can do a single polka dot, um, which I will show you. You can do kind of a series of little dots. Let me see if I can show you this one. What I call like a cluster dot center. I think you guys can see those. I'm going to show you that one too. Um, so really, you can do a wide variety of, of what you want to put in the center. So I am going to start by just showing you how to do the little cluster dots. And I'm just going to do white. But that's when we're going to pull out our little skinny liner brush here. Okay, and we're just going to use that tip. I'm going to make the center white. And you could do the centers any color. Obviously, you can see all the things in the background here. They have all different color middles. It's whatever, whatever color you want to do. Yellows and greens are really pretty. Okay, so I'm going to take our little liner brush and we're going to just sort of tap it into the white paint. Now with this brush, it's a little bit different than that bigger one. We actually want to roll this one in the paint versus swooshing back and forth like we did. This is just a really fine point and it just, it holds a little bit less paint than our flat brush. And we want to sort of keep the tip of that brush pretty narrow. And that's why we just, if you watch my pointer finger and thumb, you just kind of roll the brush in the paint to load the paint on this little guy, okay? So we'll do that a couple times. And all we're gonna do then is come and I'm just gonna tap in the center of this flower. So what I like to do is kind of tap a circle shape, okay? And then just sort of tap with the edge of the brush and it gives you just that sort of cluster. That way it's not a real solid center, it's more airy. Um, you could even Quite honestly, you could pounce a couple different colors in there if you'd like. The other option for a center um, would be a polka dot. And I'm going to go back to our flat brush that I just rinsed out. I just got to dry it off. And for the perfect polka dot every time, many of you know this secret, but what we're going to do with this flat brush is we're actually going to flip it over and use the handle for our polka dot. And I'll just show you in purple on here so you can kind of see it. But what you're gonna do is you just dip in whatever color you want and then just tap. And you can see on here, it gives you a perfect polka dot every time. Big fan, big fan of using the handle. Now, when you have something that's a little bigger, like this daisy, obviously you wouldn't want just that tiny little polka dot in there. So what you can do, same technique, but when you come to the center, instead of just tapping it, you could come and swirl it, okay? And then just make it a solid polka dot. So you have the little cluster type, you have a polka dot type. Again, using the handle gives you a perfect polka dot every time. It's wonderful. Okay, so that is it for creating our daisies today. I hope you enjoyed it. Daisies truly are one of my favorite things to paint. Um, and like we said, they can come in so many different colors and sizes and shapes. It really is just very fun. So um, a couple things since we're at the end of the video. If you enjoyed today's video, if you would consider subscribing, you just hit that subscribe button below um, on YouTube. That will let me know that you're watching and that maybe you're interested in seeing some future videos. Um, that would be awesome. There is also a notification button that you can hit. And whenever I upload videos,